Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. This is part two of my recap of the Martin Ortiz undercard. So this video covering Jonathan Rice versus Michael Polite Coffee, the rematch, and also the co-man event Frank Sanchez versus Christian Hammer. We'll cover that one at the back end of this video. So the other undercard fights were covered in another recap video, plus also the main event did a standalone video for that one. So check those out at your leisure. But we'll go to Jonathan Rice versus Michael Polite Coffee. So this was shaped as potentially a slugfest. You had Rice dominating that first fight. Both guys weighed in significantly heavier for this one. So it looked like they were going for power and to try to stop each other. But if it went rounds, they might have been in trouble in terms of the gas tank. And that actually eventuated because after about four or five rounds, both these guys breathing heavy and it wasn't the same sort of fight as the first one. I think Coffee was better in this one. He was a little bit more judicious and a little bit more defensively responsible, especially in the first five rounds. But I think the biggest thing that changed how this fight looked was Jonathan Rice was, his output was less. And I think that was because he was actively managing the extra weight. So he had extra 15 pounds on him for this one, 283 pounds. And he certainly was gassing as the fight wore on. So he was fighting more in spurts, but he was having success with that right hand, which was money all night in the first fight. And it was money when it was landing in this one. It was just not landing as frequently. But you had a pretty sort of cautious uh, first couple of rounds. And you saw Michael Polite Coffee try to do something different, go southpaw in that second round and having some success. But Rice was uh, landing the odd right hand and just keeping Michael Polite Coffee at bay but I did think he had a couple of strong early rounds. Um, from about round four on, Jonathan Rice started to land that uh, right hand with more regularity, hurting Michael Polite Coffee in round four, bailing him onto the ropes, trying to tee off on him, but you know he was trying to pick him apart, pick his shots judiciously, and not sort of rush in there and get caught with something. Ultimately, Polite Coffee survives and actually finished that round quite strongly. But I did think sort of rounds five, six, seven, and eight, you had Jonathan Rice basically taking over the fight as coffee faded. Both these guys were gassed, but Jonathan Rice, who's the taller fighter, and actually the reaches are pretty similar. I think coffee has a one inch or two inch advantage in terms of reach. But fighting at range, just picking his spots, Rice was able to just rack up rounds on more activity. Uh, Michael Polite Coffey just could not really get into the fight, have su uh, sustained periods of success. You know, at times his jab was working well. Occasionally he was ripping in the hooks, but it just wasn't enough. He was getting outwork and Rice, you know, a series of right hands would inevitably land in different rounds. So he was picking up these rounds on my card. I thought round nine was quite um, close. Coffey came out relatively strong, looping left hands, um, body shots. It was still close but I gave that one to him but heading into that final round I thought this seems to be somewhat close in terms of the action I mean maybe Rice was a round or two up but it's hard to say with these things but Rice finished strongly he actually wobbled coffee with a shot in that round I gave him that one and that clinched it for me 6-4 or 7-3 to Jonathan Rice and the actual scorecards uh, ended up being 97-93 and uh, that was two cards and 99.91. I thought the last card exceptionally harsh for um, uh, Michael Polite Coffee. I think there's a case to, to say that he won at least three rounds, um, possibly a fourth, but there were one or two rounds which were close and obviously swing rounds, but no case for him to, uh, to get a win in this fight. I think it was a deserved winner and probably one of the most entertaining post-fight uh, interviews in recent times, taking a page out of the uh, Chris Ariola book of uh, post-fight interviews. So he went on to Jonathan Rice to thank his mother, who told him it was about endurance, then went on to say he was going to make her a grandmother this year, but he had to find a girlfriend first. 
And he said um, he thanked Al Heyman, said he was going to quit his jobs, said six figures, which obviously must have been what he got for the fight, and went on to say, uh, because he was asked to, asked a question about who does he want to fight and all that sort of stuff, who's he watching in the heavyweight division. And I know some people interpreted this as saying he was going to a strip club, but from what I understood, and I've gone back in and had a look at this morning, he said, I was watching, I, I watch guys for eight hours a day on YouTube at a gentleman's club. So obviously that must be the job that he's going to quit. So I know Rice does sometimes watch my video, so correct me if I'm wrong, Johnny. But overall, Jonathan Rice gets a second win against Michael Polite Coffey. It wasn't quite the barn burner that the first one ended up being in the dominant display from Rice, but I think part of that was his output was lower because he was managing his gas tank. Perhaps it was a case he thought he could just pour it on and take a Michael Polite Coffey out within four to six rounds, something like that. Ultimately, it goes the distance. But Coffee, his cardio, you know, obviously let him down here as well. And his eyes were pretty, you know, he was pretty busted up by the end. Those right hands were really sort of, um, you know, tattooing him and uh, opened up a couple of cuts on the left eye. He looked worse for wear. And obviously, because both these guys were gassed, it didn't sort of end up coming back on rice in terms of the extra weight. I still think coming in that 15 pounds heavier was a red flag. It sort of did manifest in the fight to some extent, but ultimately wasn't made to pay. So Rice gets a win. So what, what next for Jonathan Rice? Well, I guess there's options. I mean, if he continues to work with the PBC, there could be fights for him at a certain level. I mean, Charles Martin coming off a loss to Luis Ortiz. You've got Adam Kovnatsky. There's other guys there as well. Um, you had Leonir Pero on the undercard or the prelim part of the, um, the card what about him? Because Rice has been in decent fights with up and coming prospects before. And if you're not good enough, Rice will beat you. So I think there's some options within PBC uh, and they keep it in house for the most part. So we could see him in with others. For Michael Polite Coffee, two losses on the bounce has completely drained any momentum that he had. He, you know, I think part of the problem in both fights, it doesn't really move his head. He didn't seem to be able to close the distance and uh, sort of have any sustained periods of success against Rice. And I think um, perhaps his level has been found out, but there could be similar matchups for him as well. I mean, Iago Kaladze was facing Victor Vickhurst on the undercard. What about Michael Polite Coffee versus Iago Kaladze? That would be fun. So there are matchups, I'm sure, around, and it just because a level may have been established doesn't mean you can't be in decent fights, fun fights, and fights that fans want to watch. In terms of the co-main event, Frank Sanchez at Christian Hammer, this one petered out to a decision, and there's going to be people split on this because it's clear Frank Sanchez is a very talented boxer. He's got the skills to compete with anyone in the division from a boxing standpoint, but it is going to be a case that he's going to put some people to sleep and it sort of felt like that from after about round three round four first three rounds he looked sharp slick fast putting it on christian hammer a couple of times where he sort of seemed to hurt hammer to the body but at a certain point in the fight against christian hammer who was coming forward and this is the thing hammer was applying the pressure but just been completely ineffective, not able to do anything. Often he was just walking forwards and wouldn't l let his hands go. So it is a case that his ambition seems to have drained as his career has worn on. He's accepted that sort of, that moniker that um, Kevin Johnson used to hold, where he was that sort of tough, durable gatekeeper that you can put him in. It's going to go rounds. It's going to be ugly. And Christian Hammer does spoil, does make it awkward. He is in fights where he can make the other heavyweight not look so good and you had a little bit of that here the style matchup wasn't good it, it ended up sort of you know just nullifying Sanchez a little bit because he couldn't seem to break down Christian Hammer and obviously a lot of other heavyweights have had issues as well Luis Ortiz a few years ago Tony Yoka had a fight with Hammer not so long ago didn't look good in that as well so Hammer can make good heavyweights look not so good and the combination of Sanchez ending up going on to cruise control for the majority of um, the second half of the fight at least it just ended up being a pretty dire watch some people are going to be absolutely tearing shreds off Frank Sanchez and I guess 
to some extent that's a fair call because it is an entertainment sport but at the same time you can't doubt Sanchez's skills and I mean there's a, a bit of and I know some people are going to get really upset with this but the previous version pre Andy Lee of Joseph Parker there's a lot of that sort of similarness with Sanchez where they can start fast use their skills fast hands you know good boxing technicians cruise control after that ends up sort of doing enough in rounds and no more nicking decisions obviously this wasn't a nicking a decision but there were elements of what joseph parker used to be criticized for and frank sanchez has been criticized for it as well but he is going to be tough to beat sanchez because he is fast he's got good skills good footwork and there's not going to be a lot of guys lining up to fight him because he's going to be a tough cover but at the same time with the entertainment standpoint the guy's not going to sell tickets. He doesn't have a huge fan base. There's kind of, you know, he's in the who needs him club as well. There's a number of guys that box and move that sort of fall into that position that people won't fight them unless they have to. But Sanchez, yeah, I guess some people will say he stunk out the place a little bit and it certainly sucked the air out of the building heading into the main event. And got to say that. Uh, and actually, he was criticized for doing the same against FIA Jagba. Although from the boxing standpoint, you know, pretty solid. But it just, I thought he could have gone to the body more. He could have tried to break Christian Hammer down, who effectively was called in at late notice off the couch, hadn't really trained. It showed in his shape and conditioning, but Hammer just went super negative and uh, just was there to survive, get to the final bell. Probably earned himself some further pay paydays. But I think the promoters and PBC in general um, made a mistake with this one because they had an opportunity to just drop Sanchez from the cart. Obviously, after a full training camp, would have been a bit harsh, but Carlos Negron pulls out through COVID, but they draft in a guy in Hammer who was always going to have this sort of style and this lead to this sort of fight that we saw. So did they think about that? Because a Carlos Negron fight would have led to a Frank Sanchez knockout because Negron would have been coming forward, letting his hands go, and then would have got sparked in the process. But with Hammer in this performance... His stock doesn't really go anywhere. It, you know, I think for some fans, he's probably turned them off even further. But I guess it is what it is. And the benefit of this is the experience, the rounds, and you are going to encounter guys that are more durable and hard to put away at a higher level. So I don't mind the fight and the performance in the rounds, but I know it's not going to impress some. What'd you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.